Um, your next poet is me. So, my name's Joanna. <laughs> I don't think I ever said that. Um, and I am a founder of River City Poets. And I am going to start with a poem that I can only read a couple times a year um, around this time. It sort of works. My background is in medicine. So, yeah. This poem is called Introduction. There's just something about the way a dead body sloshes in its pink embalming ooze. The first time you raise the corpse out of its stainless steel bed. You undrape the body one limb at a time, cover the head out of respect. Notice painted fingernails, scars, stretch marks. You follow the course of veins and arteries, some still dark with clotted blood. Their paths, the only roadmap through muscle and fascia and muck. You tease out nerves. Think how such prime would have felt had this patient been alive. You cringe. Open up the chest, cut through ribs with an electric saw as you work smelling the dry, acrid, unmistakable smoke of burnt bone. You take out the lungs. Holding them in your hands, you feel how strangely sponge-like all those little air sacs are, even without the oxygen. Next, you remove the heart. String your fingers through its four chambers and slice it open to examine their walls. You wonder if it ever felt pain, ever sped up with excitement, anticipation making love. But you are not allowed such romance for long. Next is the belly, all its wet, slippery, intestinal life juices somehow more pungent in death. By the end of this, you will know if this patient had gallstones or an appendectomy, whether or not she had taken a shit before she died. You move lower. Examine even her sex, cutting away labia, wincing followed the vagina from start to finish. Even piercing her clit, noticing how it looks like a little penis. And I wonder what this says for gender equality. But then, then, finally, it's time to uncover her face. You pause. You lift the towel. By now, her skin is sunken. Her cheekbones made more prominent, sockets deep and hollow. Her eyes are halfway open, and you can see that they were once a bright, bright blue. A strong face once, an old face. She could have been somebody's grandmother. And would somebody be disturbed if he knew how you were cutting Granny up so delicately? You start to shave away skin, nerves, vessels, avoiding her eyes as long as possible. Her hair is gray and stringy, matted by the fluid supposed to preserve her body. And her face, naked, devoid of skin and life and expression, looks like a mask from some ancient death ray. 